here's the thing. Every year I make these plans to be finished, all my handcrafted Yule gifts with plenty of time for other things. And almost every year I'm working on these things right up until the last minute. If any of you are Red Dwarf fans, you'll understand me when I say that I feel like Arnold Rimmer working on one of his never-ending study schedules. Wait, is this the thing in, in all different colours with all the subjects divided into study periods and rest periods and self-testing time? It took me seven weeks to make it. I've got to cram my whole revision into one night. So, long story short, I have two handcrafted gifts that need finishing. This shawl has been in progress for almost a year. The fantastic purple pie shawl that I was wearing in the talkative parts of one of my last videos. I made that for mom and it was almost done for about four or five years and I finally made a push on it so she could have it for Yule last year. This shawl, however, is one that I started back at the beginning of the year for my mother-in-law. I wanted to try the Secret Paths shawl by Joanna Lindahl and I didn't have any of the fabulous Sheepies? 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 Sheepies yarn that a lot of folks seem to favor. So when I found the super sparkly Lion brand shawl in a ball at Michael's, I kind of went for it. Funnily enough, Mum picked out this colorway. I was going for a wild teal and fuchsia mix, but Mum said she thought this looked prettier. So this shawl will be for my mother-in-law from both myself and Mum, I guess. On a perhaps practical and less sentimental note, my mum-in-law gets really cold really easily and she likes having things to curl up in when she's drinking coffee and reading on the sofa, so this should help her out. Honestly, I could bury her in yarn and she'd be a willing victim. I mean, participant. Recipient? Recipient. The other project I'm working on is dad socks. Dad socks are a constant work in progress, and that's because the men in this family haven't yet figured out that your feet are supposed to stop growing at some point. Did you know that feet don't stop growing? I didn't know that feet don't stop growing, but here we are. Dad was a size 13 for the longest time, but apparently has lived long enough to warrant a size 14. Worse still, my brother's feet have also kept growing, so unless I get myself a circular sock machine, I'm going to be knitting men's socks forever because the husbeast wants socks too, and we actually live in the same house, so he'll get mighty suspicious if every other man in the family gets socks and he doesn't. These are the socks that never end. They just go on and on, my friend. Some person started knitting it not knowing what it was, and now she'll keep on knitting it forever just because these are the socks that never end. They just go on and on, my friend. Dad's feet are a skinny size 14, so at least there's a little compensation for the length and the width of the feet. So my brother, not so much. So this is why Dad is getting socks, and my brother will have to wait until I'm all caught up. Luckily, I started these socks months ago, and I have one of them finished already. I've been procrastinating on the second of the pair because I had an idea for a video that I just don't feel witty enough to make right now. Eventually it will happen, but not this month, because Yule is coming fast and Dad needs warm toes. So, I guess I have my work cut out for me. Let's go get cozy, fire up something to watch on the iPad, and let her rip. 20 rounds of 60 stitches in Knit 2, Purl 2, and go.
don't mind my somewhat disheveled appearance. The Husbeast has been sick for the past couple of days and I really can't be arsed to put makeup on right now. Anyhow, I thought I'd give you a quick rundown as to how the Christmas crafting has been going because it has been proceeding. First, the sock. As you can see, we have managed to make it down the make it down the cuff. We have rounded the heel. There we go. And we are now working on finishing up the instep. I have about one more decrease to go and then we should be finished. Then it's just the long dark tea time of the soul, almost literally. At very least the long dark tea time of the four, size 14 foot because damn, didn't want to blaze too far ahead on this without doing a bit of an update. So for the past couple of days I've been working on the shawl, which is a little too big to show the whole entire thing, I think. We are coming along. I don't know if you can see the sparkle in here. We went from having a fairly large ball of yarn to what we've got here. So I hope I have enough to be able to finish, I don't know, another repeat. So I have absolutely no idea how this shawl ends. But we're getting there and I am actually enjoying it. It's very relaxing. It's a little hard on my wrist, but it's crochet. I always find crochet a little bit more difficult than knitting. The last minute panic hasn't set in quite yet. Probably should soon. We'll get on with things like putting up the tree. We've actually cleared a place for it this year up here, so that'll be nice. That'll be nice to actually have the tree up. Anyhow, back to work. Losing at yarn chicken. If you're not familiar with what yarn chicken is, or its sewing equivalent thread chicken, it's the knowledge that you have a finite amount of materials or resources, and the sneaking suspicion that you don't have enough to finish your project. Case in point, my mother-in-law's shawl. It has a very definite repeating pattern to it, and I'm on the very last row before the lace edging. And I'm pretty sure that I don't have enough yarn in this ball to be able to make it to the end of that last row, let alone the lace edging. Now, before anybody says, why don't you just check the store for more yarn? I've been to three Michaels over the past couple of days. And the second Michaels that I went to, the young man that I spoke with agreed with me that I'm kind of looking for a rare unicorn because the shawl in a ball, at least the sparkly stuff, seems to have been discontinued. So, the option I have is to rip back a couple of rows to the next open work area and hope that nobody realizes that the pattern repeat is a couple of rows short, which I really don't think is going to be much of a problem. It looks like I was being a little ambitious with this project because I took a look on Ravelry and it looks like most folks were stopping at about a ball and a half of yarn rather than using the full two balls the way that I was, I guess, attempting to do. The thing is that I actually remember when the shawl in a ball went on sale at Michael's because I remember standing there in the aisle looking at the shawl in a ball thinking I should probably pick up another couple of balls while I still can just in case. And the lady who was standing beside me just reached over and yoinked them right out of my grasp. So it appears that I have fallen for one of the classic blunders. The most well-known, of course, being never get involved in a land war in Asia. The second lesser well-known being never go in against a Sicilian when death is on the line. In this case, if you know that your yarn is on clearance, you better be quick and you better be mean. I guess I better get to ripping.
bad socks in the wee hours of Christmas Day. After finishing the toe, they were literally in the can. The shawl took more time. Thankfully, it wasn't my mother-in-law's only Yule present. I kept losing yarn chicken to the puffs on the last row, so I mixed them and just did my own thing. It worked out fine. festive holiday went well and was less rushed than mine. <laughs>